Hi, welcome to Sekiro. We're doing the Ashina Reservoir, that's an Ashina Castle. Um, if you've been playing along with this guide, you should have enough coin purses now to get uh, the prayer bead from the Abandoned Dungeon. So we're going to start with that. There's lots to do in this video, so click show more in the description for uh, the time codes to jump to different bits. This is where you grab the gate key if you don't already have it. Just those two dudes on the bridge will have it. That's going to unlock the spear. We're also going to fight a mini boss, unlock a new idol. Uh, fight another mini boss, get a couple of prayer beads on top of this one we're about to buy. Um, this is where the dungeon is. If you don't have it unlocked yet, don't worry. Um, we're going to come here another way, but do grab the gate key. Sell as many coin purses as you have. Um, yeah, do. Uh, there's no point in keeping them. Um, at this point, they're just dead weight. Anyway, this is the way to the reservoir from the Ashina Castle main idol. Come through here, there'll be a door to open. Uh, through there, there's a few things to pick up if you haven't. That's another door to open, but drop down here. Uh, another door, and there is Ashina reservoir. Now at this point we have 12 vitality and 3 attack power, so bear that in mind. You don't have to do this section at all, sorry there's an eavesdrop there if you want it, but we're not going to deal with those guys just yet. Um, you don't have to do any of this just yet, it's pretty high level and it's going to open up a shortcut deep into the late game um, if that's the way you want to go, but you're going to be massively underprepared for it, so just be wary. I'll touch on that in a little bit, um, but not too much detail. Click the eye in the top right to jump to those missions. Anyway, come around here, kill that clanger if you want, and then hook over here. You're going to meet this dude, Jinzemon. He starts a quest, and he's actually got a couple of options to play out. First up, if you talk to him, he'll tell you that he's being haunted by some music. Uh, you can continue to follow him throughout the game. Here is the next spot. He's at the abandoned dungeon, which we're actually going to open uh, pretty quickly after the next fight. Uh, it'll be a little bit closer. Um, and if you greet him, he'll continue uh, with the story and move on. Alternately, if you've well, alternatively, if you've spoken to Dojin in the abandoned dungeon just by Ashina Castle, uh, he will say that he's looking for a strong samurai or a strong lad, and that can either be Tokoro, I think his name is, up in Mount Senpu, or this guy, and you can lure either of them to the abandoned dungeon. We'll touch more on Dojin's quest later when we get to that idol, um, but he's a great path for upgrading materials. And on your first playthrough, I'd honestly take Jinzo, you'll see why, to him. Anyway, after fighting the Lone Swordsman, we'll come back to him, don't worry. You'll push on through here. Uh, there's a really rough fight against a Snake Eyes boss who, at this level, uh, if you're pushing straight on, is incredibly difficult if you're not prepared to abuse it with fire. You've got to be really tight on the deflect timings, um, and he will punish you. Anyway, if you make it past him, you'll meet Jinzo again. Jinzo, uh, Jinzemon again. Uh, at this point, you can't lure him to the dungeon, unfortunately, um, so if you wanted to take that route, it's too late. Anyway, carry on across here through a haunted village. Uh, you'll meet uh, Juzu lookalike. You'll break into a house. There's a little mini boss in there that I won't spoil. Uh, you'll push on through there into Mibu Village, um, which is kind of fun. Um, it's a good place to farm experience at this point if that's where you want to go, but again, there's been some rough fights. At the end of that, you'll get to another idol where you'll meet Jinzamon for the last time. He's here, and he can hear the music very close indeed. Uh, there's going to be a really, really rough fight here, but if you can do it, you'll get a pretty decent reward uh, from her uh, prayer bead and an extra bonus for death blow kills. You get loads of health back if you combine it with the other one. Um, but if you hear her out, there it is, uh, Breath of Life, Shadow, and then head back to Jinzemon. He'll say, thank you, she came to me, it was a wonderful thing. Um, and give you Jinza's Jinzo sta Jizo statue. Now, this is kind of useless, if I'm honest, which is why I recommend the Dojin quest. Uh, all it really does, like all the other Jizo statues, is when you die, um, it will automatically reset, and I'm right next to an idol, so this is the point. Uh, there we go. It will reset your uh, resurrection thing and fill a bar, which, uh, I don't know, maybe in a boss fight, but you can only take one. It just, it's not reusable, you can see it's gone from my inventory, so I just don't know that it's that useful. Um, anyway, let's get back to the mission at hand. Well, no, let's have a look, see how much my health is going up after killing uh, that mini-boss combined with the Breath of Light Life, or whatever it's called. Uh, it's really nice to have, but it's also ridiculously early to push into it, so don't beat yourself up about completing this quest now. Anyway, back at the reservoir, finally. Um, there is a lone swordsman down here, and he's looking for a shinobi who's locked up in a dungeon. That's you. Uh, don't talk to him all the way, otherwise he's going to attack you. Instead, go up and out. Up this way. Exactly the way you came out at the very beginning of the game, in fact. And then run up here. Now you'll notice a hole up here. And you can drop in through here for a death blow. It's going to be a rough fight. Um, I find it easier than the Spearman, who's also on this level, which is why I do it first. And combined with the uh, Abandoned Dungeon prayer bead that we got earlier, it's going to give us enough for a bit more vitality. 
Uh, you can abuse him with fire a little bit, but before we dive in, let's look at how to practice. Um, you may remember the bamboo thicket back in Hirata Estate. If you haven't got there yet, click eye on the top right for access to that. Uh, and head over this way. You can hook up here, and this is where the Mist Raven is stored. Uh, there's a big old jump up this kind of chute. Um, and then on top of here, where the Mist Raven is, down uh, there we've already got the Mist Raven, is this guy. He's only got one health bar and you can run away at any time. Um, and also, it's a lot easier to see. The fight against the boss in Ashina Reservoir uh, is going to be in really tight quarters and there aren't many places to run. Because you can run away here at any time if things go wrong, I would definitely come here to practice if you're having trouble against the Lone Swordsman. Remember though, of course, to uh, put your experience just over the next bar and spend any money you have so you don't lose it if you die. This guy, uh, with his sword sweeps, he comes really late. Um, so you want to be prepared to deflect those. With his kicks, you can choose to dodge them. I like to deflect them um, most of the time, although my timing's pretty rubbish. He does a Mikiri counterable kick there as well. That's a thrust kick, um, and you can get a Mikiri counter off it. Uh, you can also jump. Um, he's somewhat susceptible to that, but they're super susceptible to fire. However, you don't want to waste your oil on this guy. Um, unless you really want to practice timings. What you want to be waiting for is that jump there where he goes way above your head. Dodge at the last minute um, and then you can get a counter attack in which will interrupt whatever perilous attack he's about to do. It's usually a thrust, it's sometimes a sweep. Um, but essentially learn the timings on the, there we go, dodge and attack. I failed the attack there. <laughs> dodge woo, and attack. And you should interrupt him every time and that's where you want to be putting the damage in um, to lock his posture bar in place. Uh, and at that point you should get a pretty decent death blow. When you can deal with this guy without taking too much damage or using too many healing gourds, you can see I'm kind of on the defensive here. And this is the problem with these guys. Once you back off, they'll start to pressure you. So really you want to try and get space between them. But against the guy in the Ashina Reservoir, it's going to be super difficult. But watch for the sword swings, they come in late. Watch for most of the kicks, actually. Most of the attacks um, actually have a late attack. He's also got the posture recovery, which is fine. It's not going to be the end of the world against this guy. Um, I thought I was going to get a Makiri counter there to show you, but no. Uh, the Makiri counter is relatively straightforward, but again, yeah, just wait for this high kick. Um, and then dodge under it. Oh, naughty posture, man. There we go. Dead. But yeah, I would come and practice against this guy. And when you can take them about this easily, so basically without taking too much damage, that was really stupid. I just walked into it at the beginning. But you should be able to start to learn the deflect timings. Um, attack once, wait to see what they do. It's much like the blue robe dudes. When they do that kick, dodge, and counter attack, you can usually get two hits in if you dodge around far enough to the side. Dodge again, attack. Uh, and keep close, keep the pressure on. If you're close, then he won't be doing any nonsense like running in and messing with timings. And they generally try to go for that attack to push you back. When you can take this guy down in 30 seconds or less, I would say you're probably ready for the shinobi guy. With that in mind, I tried a few things on the shinobi guy here. I tried to poison him. Um, this is back at the Ashina Reservoir, and you'll notice that the fighting zone is much tighter. Um, so yeah, I used pretty much all my spirit emblems, um, some with really solid hits. This is just the basic Super Mario. You probably don't have enough upgrade materials if you're taking him on early to get the Super Mario that will break through block, which is actually pretty useful. Um, but yeah, uh, he can be rough. Uh, fire is much more effective. Um, you can get his health down quite significantly even at this attack level. Um, you'll have a chance to get a couple of hits in as well and just getting a, even one oil and fire on him at this stage will probably take his health down enough that every deflect and every hit that you do is going to be uh, unrecoverable for him unless he does his posture recovery move which is going to cost him dear. But yeah, as always, you want to be careful about healing in these fights. They're going to punish you. Um, if you're not far away enough, uh, they'll run in and do an attack. Um, that's another thrust. You can jump it, you can deflect it, you can Nikiri counter it. Um, but he shouldn't give you too much trouble as long as you don't back into that little hole. You can push him into the corner, but be wary that he will do this high kick and try and jump over you if you're in the corner, and it can really throw the camera off. I mean, it's tough to time. But with a little practice against the guy up in Bamboo Thicket, you should find that without too much trouble, uh, you're able to take this guy. And once you learn the deflect timings um, properly, here's the first run or here's a full run bit, um, you should find he's actually pretty trivial. And it's worth practicing because you're going to meet a bunch more of these guys in various different forms. And just knowing their kick pattern and their attack pattern and the delays on their deflect and when to dodge and when to attack is going to be really, really helpful. There it goes, he's got that crazy kick, but it gives you an opening at the back end. Now he's going for posture, uh, but thankfully it was super close so I could get it. Jammy dodge, lost lock on him, unfortunately, uh, but it's okay. 
just keep the pressure on, don't back away. Uh, if you need to heal, run to one end and then run to the other so he doesn't have distance to close. Um, go for the dodge. I dodged backwards there, which is really stupid. You need to do a side dodge against that kick, otherwise he's going to track you. I let his posture uh, trade for some of my health, which seemed like a good trade-off, because actually his posture is not too hard to get back. Um, especially when his health is this low, he's not going to be recovering it. You can see I've got it back already, and there's the death blow. Um, so just be wary of his nonsense. Beware that everything's a pretty late deflect, um, and that dodging is a perfectly valid uh, tactic. Anyway, with him down, don't forget to loot him. I think I did. The experience is kind of weak. It's a couple of hundred. Um, but you do get two scrap magnetite and obviously the prayer bead. Oh, there's a scrap iron up here. This is right back where you started. And if you've unlocked swimming, um, you can drop down here. Don't worry if you haven't. It's pretty far off. Although you can do it before Genichiro if you want to. Uh, down here is a Mibu Balloon of Soul, I think. Um, but we'll go into swimming more when you unlock it. I'll come back and cover all the areas that we've been through. I thought I would just start including them here because it's possible. Anyway, carrying on past him, uh, hooking up past the scrap iron, you'll come down to the abandoned dungeon bottomless hole. Uh, there's a Shichiman warrior down there, and we'll have a look at fighting him, although I don't recommend it. There's a couple of lizards up here that you might want to backstab if you need a little bit of health, and you've unlocked that skill. Uh, and then drop down. Don't drop down there. Um, that will put you into the fight uh, and there's you can't get back up, but I'll show you that yeah That's he you're gonna need pacifying agents, which you don't really have yet um, and also uh, Divine confetti um, and the anti-air blow uh, Text from black hat badger will also be useful, but there's a bulging coin purse worth worth a thousand coins um, And here is the bottomless hole idol and you'll notice Jinzaimon just ahead. Uh, we touched on his quest just earlier um, but we'll come back and deal with that. Uh, build your third prayer necklace, which was the reason we took on the Lone Swordsman. Um, and then I'll just show you the route. If you do decide you want to drop off here, you may notice there's a hook here uh, that you think you'll be able to hook back up to. You will not. A fog ceiling, I guess, will appear, and now you're trapped. Except you're not, really. You can run over to the other side. Watch out for these things. They cause pretty high terror. Um, and because you don't have any uh, anti-terror stuff yet, if you haven't been to the bottomless dungeon, uh, it could be pretty scary. But watch out over here for the hook point. I do a terrible job of running towards it. You get hit by that and nearly die. Brilliantly done. Anyway, hook up there when you see the prompt. Over here, grab the pacifying agent. Use it if you need to, although you're probably better off just trying to get out and run um, so that you don't die. Up here, you'll meet a zombie. Uh, they die to fire, or you can just kill them twice. Um, they've got a pretty nasty grab, which might mess you up if you've got high terror. Uh, but they do drop pacifying agent. I'm just going to rush through here. But this is the way back to the abandoned dungeon, which is where you can pick up the fourth prayer bead if you didn't pick it up at the beginning. Just use the gold, uh, bulging coin purse that you just found for a thousand coins. Back to Ashina Reservoir. Now, I actually find this spear guy pretty difficult, um, and I would recommend maybe coming back later. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. If you do want to carry on, there's an eavesdrop opportunity here. Uh, then gank these guys after killing the dogs. Uh, they'll turn around to look at the dogs, which will allow you to sneak up. There we go. And then come around the back as if we're going back to the lone swordsman. But instead of hooking over, we're going to carry on down and stay on this side. Uh, I failed to jump up here quite spectacularly. There's a few ways to get over here, but I make it look incredibly difficult. Uh, you can jump over and hook onto this tree and then run back. Uh, we want to be over on the left-hand side, basically. There's a few rats that we can stealth kill from up here. And then you can hook up that way if you miss the jump. Or you can go up here, run to the edge of the branch, jump, and jump again. It helps if you're running. Uh, get up there, run down here, jump off the side, and hook on there. Or you can cut to the left um, here, uh, and then just jump across there and jump across there and run around. Make sure you're running, obviously, the whole time. Um, it's a little fiddly with the controller to be holding B and pushing A, and the jump's kind of delayed. It's weird. But anyway, however you get here, drop down here. There's one rat you can get from behind. Another one guarding a couple of items up ahead. I think they're crafting items. Um, I want to say yellow gunpowder is maybe one of them, if that's even a thing. <laughs> uh, rat there, anyway. Backstab him. Uh, scrap iron and uh, a heavy coin purse. Okay, and then there's one guy down here. You can either walk down uh, and around to him or just drop kill him from here. It doesn't really matter. I think he's on a balloon, maybe? Yeah, maybe a balloon of spirit. Uh, anyway, carry on back up here. It uh, doesn't really matter which way you go. That's the moon door uh, that we escaped through and got our arm chopped off right at the beginning, but obviously it's locked. Uh, head back over the way that we went if we fell. Um, not much else to see there. That bridge leads over to the abandoned dungeon if you haven't been there yet. Um, although I'm almost certain you have because we've just shown it. Uh, and then uh, drop down here. And we're going to head basically back again towards the lone swordsman but stop here. Get this clanger from behind so that he doesn't raise an alert and then you can shoot this rifleman. 
Uh, if you don't have gouging top, uh, two, uh, th sorry, three shuriken ought to do it. And if you charge them, um, it will be just the right time for, for him to be aiming and for you not to have to uh, worry about him blocking. Anyway, open these doors. Now you've got the gate key from those two guards on the bridge at the beginning. That was the bridge that we just looked at. In here there's a heavy coin purse. That's another 500 coins. And the loaded spear prosthetic. Kyubu's broken horn or something like that. Come on, pick it up. There we go, Kyubu's broken horn. Uh, so you can take that back to the sculptor and get the loaded spear fitted. Um, I used it a lot in my first playthrough because uh, it was one of the first prosthetic things I got, but it's actually not that great. There's a few places where it's really useful, but as a general rule, um, there was almost always a better tool for the job, I found. Anyway, once you've cleared those two guys, having gone under the building and grabbed the pickup down there, uh, head back this way. There's a rifleman here uh, who you can use three shuriken on again, and just to the left there is a uh, spear guy. Um, but on this run through I'm ignoring him. What you want to do is drop down here, backstab this guy, but the timing is really tight and I didn't think I was going to make it. In fact, he turned around and saw me. That should still give you time to at least get one of these guys without being detected. There's another guy up there you might be able to get, and then if one of these uh, big guys is seen, you don't worry too much. You should have the tool set now to be able to deal with them. You can light them on fire, poison them a little bit, uh, you can parry them, you can just lay down damage. They shouldn't do you too much, and with your bonus from uh, stealth kill, uh, from finisher health bonus from Breath of Light. <laughs> wow, that was a mouthful. Uh, you should be able to manage that quite easily. I completely forgot the spear guy. Here he is here, so deal with him too and get a bit more health back before you go off to see the spear guy. Uh, the reason I think I find I'm just this is a slightly cleaner way at it. Uh, imagine you've killed the two guys through the grass under the building. If you come down here and drop kill the, not drop kill, stealth kill the spear guy, then you can get around and get the archer. Uh, not the archer, the gunman, sorry, the rifleman, uh, when the big guy's got his back turned. Lean against this wall, and you'll see here what I mean about the timing being really tight. You've got to drop down as soon as he turns, because the guy on the left is on patrol as well, and he will turn around and see you if you're not careful. Immediately duck, come around the back of this brick, wait for that guy to turn around, and then you can roll up and backstab him as soon as he does that. There you go. And then don't forget the guy here with his back turned, who's a pain if you activate the spear fight. Now the spear fight, uh, if you walk up these stairs crouched, the spearman will come down, then cut left, hook on here, and then crouch immediately and cut around, keep uh, as far behind him or keep behind him as much as you can, don't push too hard otherwise he'll see you and you'll have to deplete two health bars which is not fun. The reason I hate this guy is because he pushes when you need healing, he's got such a huge range. Um, and also if you fail you've got to clear that whole pack again or it's a really rough fight and can find quarters up here. It's possible you can back off this way and the guys downstairs won't see you, but you'll have to hide and lose their aggro, and the stealth blow is kind of a pain, and so, yeah, this guy's kind of rough. I recommend leaving him until much later when you've got a couple more attack points and maybe a couple more vitality. But the basic gimmick to this fight is trying to roll or uh, block most of his incoming attacks until he does the big overhead spin, which is an opportunity to ruin him. You'll see here I took a lot of damage stupidly early on trying to get into position, but then he does like three or four in a row. Heal if you go down before you go in. That overhead spin, you've got a chance to get a couple of hits in. He'll then do a uh, thrust, which you can McKiri, and then often a final hit, which knocks him around for huge posture damage. Uh, as long as you keep him close and pressure him, he'll do it again. Uh, there it is. Uh, I hit him here to cancel the McKiri. Then he spins again, do the deflect, McKiri, deflect again. It's a late deflect, and he'll spin round chop him in the back, and that's three to knock his posture pretty much from zero to full. Um, so that's what you're really looking to do. But let's look at some of his other nonsense. Uh, here comes the stealth attack. I completely missed it. You can light him on fire. That's perfectly feasible. It'll allow you to get some early hits in. Uh, you can also, that was pretty bad timing, but uh, jump a lot of his attacks um, and then get a counter attack in. Or, sorry, a chop after the hit. Um, and as you'll see here, every time he goes red, uh, attacking him cancels it thrust gets behind him and I can get a couple of free hits in as well but the problem with uh, just mindlessly jumping is sometimes I'll do that overhead swipe and it'll catch you out so you've kind of got to if you're going to do it that way it's going to be cheesy and be prepared to die um, it's not foolproof uh, you can as I said light him up put him on fire um, that's an absolutely surefire way to get him uh, and then just run around assuming you've killed everyone else while the fire burns him and rinse and repeat uh, the jumping wasn't great there, but you can also jump the overhead swing. Um, it's possible, uh, although difficult. Uh, you can also dodge around those thrusts if you want to. 
Uh, it's not easy, but uh, if you get it right, um, it will allow you a big opportunity to do damage. It won't do as much posture damage, though. Uh, you can deflect this guy, uh, but also... Here it comes. There, somehow I managed to jump over it, get behind him for big damage on his back. But that's really going for a vitality win. Um, the timing on it's really rough. I only ever did it by luck. Um, yeah, I always find this the preferred method, but if you get it wrong, it can hurt a lot, especially that last hit. That really does big damage. But there's a jump. I managed to clear it, and then you get behind him. You can get some good hits in. Yeah, that thrust, if you don't get it in time, it's brutal. But essentially keep the pressure on. Wait for him to spin it above his head. Get the Makiri counter. Hope you don't miss the deflect like that, where he kills you. Um, this is why it's good to come back later. Sorry, I know I'm chirping on about that, but uh, he can just punish you so much, and there's no need to take him on for the single prayer bead he gives at this stage. There's also a skill you may find useful in the Shinobi tree. Uh, here it is, called Shinobi Eyes. Um, on the bottom rung at the top thing, you see it there. And it does extra counter damage, or extra posture damage when you do a successful Mikiri counter. Um, and since he does so many thrusts, it might be beneficial. I didn't have it loaded up, but I think I did on my first playthrough. Anyway, grab the prayer bead, loot him for a little bit of cash, 117, uh, and then loot the area. There's a scrap iron just by this tree that I ran past there. Inside there's a remnant that you can uh, talk to, listen to, I'm not really sure. There's a bunch of stuff you can smash up by running around, which is quite satisfying. And there's a hook opportunity on the top of the building, which leads you around to a Jizo statue uh, tucked behind the roof here. With that done, head back to Sculptor, uh, fit the loaded spear, um, use any scrap iron for upgrades if you feel that you need to. Uh, I'm heading towards Gouging Top, it's a pretty neat shuriken upgrade, so let's grab the spear upgrade for now. But let's deal with the Shichima Warrior. Uh, for him, you're probably going to want to visit Black Hat Badger for the anti-air deathblow text. It's not a guaranteed kill, but it makes it a little bit easier if it triggers. Uh, I picked up the Yashimaru Sugar because I thought I might try those out, but it was not good. You're also going to want to go to the Abandoned Dungeon from the Ashina Castle and kill these zombie dudes. They die from fire uh, most easily, or you can just death blow them twice. They drop Pacifying Agent. Remember to actually loot them, I almost forgot. Uh, they drop it pretty frequently. There's a couple more up here that I kill who drop two each, so you should get topped up pretty quickly. Once you feel like you've got enough of those, you can either travel back to Bottomless Hole or come through the Abandoned Dungeon like we saw earlier. Uh, fire up some Divine Confetti, you can farm that from the uh, Sheena Castle Antichamber. And activate a um, Pacifying Agent, because that will lower the amount of terror damage you take, and then just go in and wail on him. Um, you should have enough health at this stage uh, to uh, tank a hit from him. When you do enough damage, most of his terror orbs will disappear. He might jump, you saw that red dot appear there, hopefully. If I'd activated attack while I was in the air, that would have done an instant death blow on him and taken off one point. Um, as it is, I managed to finally get the trigger. See there, it just fired again. Um, I think I get it this time there. Instantly kills him. Um, it doesn't matter what health he's at, but because I missed the prompt, it took a while, so it was practically no better than having killed him manually. The problem here is it's easy for this to backfire. You can take a lot of terror damage very quickly. Um, watch out when he teleports like that after you've done sufficient damage. He'll almost always fire a beam, um, and so you'll need to run sideways to him. You'll see that again in a minute. Um, he's going to do it here, but you see you club up enough damage on him uh, he'll counter um, and deflect and then probably come in for an attack which you can dodge uh, or sidestep. Uh, watch out for being killed obviously. Um, don't forget you can run away although you will have wasted your divine confetti and pacifying agents and divine confetti is really annoying to farm. Um, but yeah heal up when you need to uh, use pacifying agents reapply your divine confetti. Ideally you want to do that in between when you've done enough damage to, to him <laughs> enough damage to him for him to back off but there's the death blow um yeah you just got to be careful with this guy honestly i don't recommend taking him on right now you get a tanto knife which is kind of great for late game farming uh where you use spirit emblems to make things easier and you don't want to blow your supply um you want to save them for bosses here's another run at it um from the other side drop down pacifying agent and um Aiko sugar i don't have not Aiko sugar sorry uh divine confetti I don't have anti-air blow here, um, alas. So here he disappears. Um, you want to, he's always going to fire this beam, almost always, so just run uh, perpendicular to him. Um, I find it easiest when I don't lock on. Quite often when I lock on, I end up getting clipped by it. Um, 
but yeah you can lock on if you find that easier you can see he's jumping around all over the place here so if i'd had the anti ablo uh attack it would have been really useful uh but once you hit him a certain amount of times yeah as you see most of his terribles disappear um, when he disappears like this, heal if you need to, uh, reapply um, Ungo Sugar or Echo Sugar or whatever the attack damage bonus one is if you need it. See that clip me there because I was locked onto him. I always uh, don't run at an oblique enough angle. Uh, so you can see his attacks here. You just basically want to keep running towards him and dodging left and right uh, to take minimal damage. Um, if you've got a pacifying agent active, it's beneficial. But if you're too slow to get to him, he'll just disappear and then you'll have to run away from him again. Um, so yeah, get in there, and obviously you run the risk of your Divine Confetti coming off. On stage 2, he's a little more aggressive. He always seems to hit a little more. Um, so do just be aware of managing your health in between phases too. Uh, but close up on him. I've obviously sped this up because uh, you've seen this pretty much now. Uh, if your Terra gets to that much, don't be afraid to back off and apply another Pacifying Agent and just dodge in and out of the Terra Balls. Uh, this is also much, much easier to come back to when you've got the Loaded Umbrella with the purple upgrade. Um, it's somewhat late game, but it completely protects you from Terra, and with the right skill set, you can just do a counter-attack off the back of him. It completely trivializes these fights. Uh, but if you, for some reason you want to get the Tanto Knife now and a couple of bits of crafting material, well then you're very welcome to do so. The Tanto Knife itself gives you five kind of bonus spirit emblems. You might see plus five down there on the bottom right, but also takes half your health. And the reason it's kind of a late game item is because there are baddies which require spirit emblems, or at least spirit emblems make farming them much, much easier. Uh, some of the attacks that require them. So by using the Tanto Knife, you're not wasting your spirit emblem uh, supply. Um, and in fact, you quite often increase it because you don't really eat into them. Um, because farming is generally safe, you're not going to need too many healing gourds. Uh, and you can just reuse it. You can use it three times per rest, although the first time you pick it up, it's only got one shot in it. You can also use it for ninjutsu if you've got that. Um, it's super useful uh, for farming, especially in places like the Senpu Temple. Anyway, that whew, is Ashina Reservoir. Lots to see and do, as I said. Um, it's a big one. Uh, on the left, um, what should we do there? If you haven't fought him yet, get a Chiro. Uh, and on the right, um, maybe we put the bottomless dungeon hole in there. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.